welcome to the Marketplace in Action. Breaking down the words to uncover the promises that God has for your life. Building your faith for those promises are you. Ah, good evening Hello. and welcome to Marketplace in Action. I'm your host as always, Dr. Ken. With me as always is Pastor Anthony and our special Hello. guest, Prophet Jeff. And I'd like to begin with, if I may, it talks about marketplace and action is a real Bible solution for everyday problems we have in the marketplace. I know sometimes we shorten the marketplace uh, words and make it MIA, and we talked about this last week. Sometimes I wonder if that's not a prophetic decoration missing in action. That's what it stands for. But are we missing in action? Where are we in our faith? What are we believing for? Today, the group and I want to talk about what it means to look back on our life. Are we on track? Where are we in our personal walk? What are we hoping to accomplish? That's what we want to talk about, whether you 20, 30, 50, 60, whatever. Where are you? And we're going to bring it back to where hope is. But first, I want to declare that it, today is the third, 13th day, the 17th year. There will never be a day such as today. Three is the divine order. Thirteen is, breaks up six and seven. Six is man, seven is the spiritual perfection. Now, it equals, six and seven equals 13, which is victory, and I'll show you where it is. Joshua walked around the wall six times, in six days, one time a day, on the seventh day, he walked around seven times. So that was man's action of walking around the walls in those six days, man's performance, but on the seventh, God got involved, and that's what brought the victory. So thir uh, 13 is victory, and 17 is victory. So it breaks down like this. We are in a divine order for our body and soul for a double victory. Mm. So as we chew on that for a second, I want to talk about we are anointed and talented, but I'm wondering, especially at my age group, did I miss it? Did they, they're just beginning, or are they? Or are they on track? That's what we'll discover today. Whatever age group you're in will discern, help you discern, help you understand there's hope still. So let us begin. You'll judge it for yourself if you're on track or not. The program is always designed to bring hope. And I know in Romans 5, 5, it says, hope does not disappoint. But what is hope? Hope is a desire for certain things to happen. This, of course, means reversing a force. An appointment is an appointment to meet somebody at a particular time and place. So don't you think that we should set an appointment for hope? Mm -hmm. Our limitations in our mind before ever experience limitations in our life. So we're already discounting that we're not educated. We're already discounting we're not good looking enough. And by the way, the flesh always looks for beauty. So every time you think somebody might not be good looking, somebody might be overweight or underweight, or somebody doesn't look a certain way, we're in the flesh. That's the sign of flesh. We're always looking at the beauty. It doesn't mean like the beauty outside, how beautiful the sky are. That's in the spirit. But he, let me just say this. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. So I'll ask you, Pastor. If, first off, we shouldn't measure our progress against others, especially when they're pursuing the worldly goals. And second, our wisdom is not of this world, it's foolishness with God. God simply doesn't operate in the world's economy. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, Dr. Ken. That the kingdom of heaven operates on uh, different principles, faith and hope and all, all the good things of God. And a couple verses came to mind, and one is uh, what Jesus said is, where your heart is, your treasure is. Good. 
and the people of this world who are operating, like you said, for beauty, for money, for power, their heart is on the things of this world. And so that's where they try and build up their treasure. Let me collect money for the future. Let me get beauty things. Let me collect all these things. And then Jesus said, well, those people have their rewards. And that's kind of a scary thing because as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we believe that there is greater things to come. And if our heart is on the things of this world, then when we die, that's going to be it. Our heart will still be on those things, that's and right. those things will bring destruction to our life because we will still be chasing fleshy, earthly things when we should have been set on the hopes of the spiritual things to come. And isn't that what faith is? Faith is the belief that there is things that are the unseen, Yes. is what is greater. And say, wait, the promises of God, That's good. that is greater than anything on this earth that could ever amount to. And so we either have the choice. So we challenge you viewers, where is your heart set? Is it set on the things that we can see, the objective things that we can touch and we can chase after and say, oh, I want that. That person over there has this more That's wealth. It. They have wealth. I want that. I want their wife. I want their car. I want their house. I want their life. That's what I want for my life. Do we chase those physical things or do we have hope in the things that are the unseen things which are far greater than the things of this world? Prophet? Yeah, we're, we're challenging you to really search your heart. That's what uh, I'm getting from Pastor mm -hmm. here. And I want to read a verse to you that really just hits that home. It's 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. You have to get the revelation of God in you, the Good. hope of glory. So sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense or an account to everyone who asks the reasons for the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. So be ready to give an account. Your life should just operate in such a way that people look to you and say, whatever you have on you, I just, I need, I want. That's you right. seem like you just, you have hope in this hopeless situation. I need that. This verse is talking. Be ready. Do, are people coming to you and say, what do you have? What is different about you? And we need to have that account ready, the hope of glory. God is within you. And so this world is looking for answers and we have the one true answer. His name is Jesus. Amen. So be ready to give an account. And let's live in a way. That's the challenge today is really live in a way that your heart is sanctified. That your heart is turned on to the things of God, mm -hmm. onto the spirit. And so that's our challenge for you today. I'm really hearing. Amen. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited I'm for excited. where this is going. Let me say it this way. We're talking in perspective of where we're at, different uh, age groups we have here. And I want to encourage everybody that's over 40, 50, 60, 70, like I am, is did I miss it? I've been a millionaire twice as I've spoken before on the show. I want to encourage you now that I did it all on my own. When I was their age, all I thought about was money and power and wealth, and it got me nowhere. There's no satisfaction. So I want to say this, all you over 40, remember this, most of the Bible characters started, they had to build their character, but at 30, they stepped into, David was king, but he wasn't in full-blown reign until he was 40, and so on. Same with Joseph, reigning at 30, but didn't really get, he was second in command, but he didn't really get into it until he was closer to 40. Here's my point, same with Solomon, he didn't, as he got older, he lost everything, he was the wisest, most powerful had the most money, at the end of the ball, he lost everything because he wasn't following God. Here is my point, is, dear friends, we are God's children now. What we will be is not yet been revealed. Mm -hmm. First John 3, 2. Mm -hmm. Wherever you're at, whether you're my age, feeling like you're over the hill, or you're just starting like these two young men that have a powerful ministry, what John basically was saying, you can assess you yourself all you want right now, but it will be determined what's inside of you, of your future, that's invisible. It won't be visible yet until God reveals it. Pastor, speak for your age group in the 30 group. 
how would you see people? How would you encourage them to move in? Is, man, I'll tell you the one thing that's the foundation, and it's what I really like what Pastor Jeff is saying because he said, give a, a, a defense to the account of hope. And I feel that's a really good starting position, you know, for people in my age group is because, you know, life brings its ups and downs. Let's be honest. We can't always go around pretending, no, life is good, you know, praise God. I mean, there's going to be moments that we're having, you know, travesty and, and things go wrong in our lives. We can't ignore that. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking, you know, we have to be at the place to where the foundation is set and sealed and unbreakable. That's it, right there. Because we can't be going around, you can, in your 20s, 30s, and upper, you can't be going around, oh, I don't even know if God is real anymore. I, I just don't even know. I don't even know. That's, that's time is over with. We need a solid foundation. And the word foundation in the, in the Hebrew, I found this out, is means the things that are settled. You know, we've yeah. talked about this more on our show. Yeah. Is this is the commandments of God, your faith that knowing that God is real and the word of God is true. That stuff cannot be up for debate. If you want to move forward in your faith, in your life, in the blessings that God and the, and the future that God has for you, those things can no longer be on the table up for discussion. Those things are settled in your life. Pray that you, God will give you the faith to settle those things. You cannot be questioning, oh, is God real? I don't even know. You know, like I've had a tough week and I'm just driving home and I'm like, yes, the promises of God are true. Yes, he has paved a way for my future. Yes, yeah. I know. I know that. I know that. I know that. And we may come to God and we're not always joyful. Thank you, God, for, you know, but those things are settled in my life and I can build on that and move forward, you know, and then I look at my, that is the first step because I look at like my, my grandpa who was like, he had a real account for his, his faith because, uh, he wasn't educated, didn't know all the theology, but he could challenge anyone, you know, in his Italian accent. What do you mean uh, God don't, is not a real? Look what he did for me. That's you know, right. he was 100%. He knew right, where right. he right. was, and he knew where God brought him, and you could not take that away. That's so that is the hope that God gives to your life. I'll go on uh, next time about how to further that. But that is the foundation. Have that foundation. You're too old to be sitting there questioning God if, if for real or not. Get that thing settled so God can build from there. Prophet? Yeah, you know, what I really want to just tie it all together is it's not about a young generation. It's not about, you know, a 30-something generation or, or an older generation. It's about a generation that seeks the face of God. Right. That's and, it. and let me read this scripture. I always like to go back to this scripture. Be glad then, children of Zion, be glad if you're in the kingdom of God. Be glad if you're a child of God. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. He's given you the things of the past, and he will cause the rain to come down f uh, upon you, the former and the latter rains, in the first months. He is faithful. And so wherever you're at, you can know, you can look at your 20s, uh, we can all go back on our life and, and look, you know, God is always faithful. He's, we've never seen his, his seed begging for bread or, 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 or out in the cold. You know, he always comes through. He's just so faithful. And that's what I just really am hearing, just testimony after testimony. We could argue theology until we're blue in the face. Right. But just like Anthony was saying, you can't argue the power of someone's testimony. It's just the facts. My life was this, and then God showed up, and now it's this. And we can go back in every generation. It doesn't matter how old or how young. The power of God is always relevant. And so that's what we want you to really take away. I want you to take away. The power of God. You don't have to worry about being, oh, man, I'm not culturally relevant. I'm too old for, to meet with these young people. Right. Or I'm too young to meet with, talk with to these old people. If you seek the presence of God, you are culturally relevant. If you love the presence of God, you can relate to a any age demographic, and you just have to operate in love. That is what it's all about. And so we hope that you don't feel like you're too young or too old to fill, fulfill the promises of God today. So, yeah, hopefully you're encouraged with that. Well, let me just say this. In Jeremiah 29, 11, 
we have to go by what the Lord says. He says, for I knew the plans I have for you. Yes, right. good. Plans for a hope. Mm -hmm. There is that word, hope and a future. Which means it's not visible, but there is a plan in God's mind. And let me start closing with this. As Pastor says, Romans 15, 4, for whoever has written the past was written for our instructions. He's talking about the Bible. So we would have, there's that word, hope through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures. Let me ask you this. In closing, with all of us involved, do, did we do our best at the office with our children, with our people we meet with, our friends, our relatives, our people at church we deal with? Second, did we hurt anybody? Or were we hurt? Did we say anything back? Third, do we, like a pastor was saying as he's driving away, the third is, do we go the extra mile for our customers or the people we're trying to help if we're employed or employees or the people that we employ? And last, do we suppose that we support our employers, our people, our bosses, our, our governments, our president in our case, or uh, your leaders that you're dealing with? Did we have a good attitude? I'll start with Pastor. Pastor, those four things, are we really concerned about how, if we're really going to analyze our life, but those are the four essential things we have to understand. Are we living for Christ or are we just playing? <laughs> That's a question, man. That is a question. And, I mean, what is this life for? What are, what are we put on here? What's the ultimate purpose of our life? And I'm sure everyone watching is like, yes, tell, what is the purpose, you know? And everyone wants to know, God, what is, what is do you have for my life? What is my purpose? What is, what are you, my plan? And the only one, I think, who's ever lived out that in a full potential was Jesus Amen. himself. Jesus came here, and sin did not uh, distract him from the plan. And, but let's be real. Like, all of us, we've fallen short. You know, Paul said that we've sought for the glory of God and what he has for us. And it's very interesting, Dr. Ken, why our plans aren't all revealed to us. He yeah. says we, God has a perfect potential for our life, but it's not revealed. Why? Because he knows we're going to mess up sometimes. That's right. And sometimes when we mess up, it can be to an extent. Sometimes we just mess up a little bit and we could still go back to that plan. But sometimes the saddest thing is when God has some potential for us and we mess up so bad that we can no longer get back to that place. And we're like, wait a minute, God can restore anything. But no, let's be real. If God wanted you to preach all around the world and save thousands of people, but you ended up murdering someone and ending up a life in prison because there's earthly consequences for that sin. Now, what if you, God had revealed to you your exact future that you were supposed to go around the world and do all these great things, but you no longer can do that because you have sinned? Mm. That would bring death and damnation to all of us. That God can, cannot show us the plan that he has for us because it would bring destruction because we would go every day in life knowing how much we've fallen short and can no longer live the plan that God ultimately has for us. Yes, God can change our plan and say, well, you're in prison for life now. You're going to have a prison ministry. Yes. And these yes. people on death row, you That's are going to bring life and restoration, you know, while you're in that prison with them. But that was not God's original plan for you. Get real, because that would include that God wanted you to murder someone in order to fulfill your plan. That is not the word of God. That is not the truth. Just hands down, it is not the truth. But God can bring restoration. So... Instead of saying, God, why aren't you showing me everything you have for my life? That is not the question. Say, God, let me live in faith for today. That's it. And then you will show me a little bit more of the glimpse of your plan yeah. for me. And I will live that way. And I, because then you are challenged to live a life of faith constantly. Not live a day of faith and live the rest by knowledge. No, that would bring destruction. Be thankful that God has shown you a little bit of hope. Because you put forth a little bit of faith, and that 
is the start of Prophet, two minutes or less, we'll run out of time. Yeah, Romans, I want to just take what he's saying mm -hmm. and tie it in. Romans 8, 28 says, God will work all things out for the good, mm -hmm. those who are called according to his purpose. And you are called, but yes. sometimes we do get into those situations where we call them, we make a mess out of it. Yes. And God takes us, our mess and makes a beautiful message out of it. And that's a word for you today. If if you feel like all, maybe all hell is breaking loose, like you feel like, man, I've missed it. And you maybe you are in prison and you feel like, that is going on. Romans 8, 28. God will take that situation and make something yes, beautiful out of it. And I want to just declare this uh, verse over you. It's Joel 2, 25. So I will restore the years that the swarming locusts and the canker worm have eaten. God wants to restore the years. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get caught up in being like, oh, man, I've missed so many. I lived a life of sin for nope. this long. You can just start living right today. No. Today no. is the Good. day of salvation. Today you can do it better than you did yesterday. You have a choice to make this the greatest day <laughs> because good. you can't live in the past. It's already gone. You have the grace for just right now, right. and you don't have the grace for tomorrow yet. You have the grace for this, right moment, this moment, right now in time. Right. So live to the fullest because tomorrow is not promised, my friend. So God will restore to you, but you got to live with the hope, the hope of glory, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Powerful That's word. That's good. I want to close with this. That was just so powerful. Remember, God initiates the contact to us. Mm. Everybody, you might hear people say, well, I found God. You haven't found anybody. <laughs> God has initiated for you. The reason being is when he initiates for us, it's up to us to uh, say, yes, I'll accept the call. Remember the free will we have. Remember he doesn't, he gives us total free will, but not too much where we'll kill ourselves because it shows history repeats itself. When we start mm -hmm. governing ourselves like the democracy, I'm not saying in America it's not working out, but it's short, there's some shortcomings there. But every time we try to govern ourselves, it always goes to destruction. So we need one ruler, that's Jesus Christ. Yes. And yes. the very point to this whole conversation is he doesn't give us our purpose and calling. He only tells us individually when we're ready. Jesus said in uh, Hebrews 5a, I suffered to learn. So sometimes we have to suffer to I learn the things of the Lord. But also, it's very important for us to be encouraged and know that Lord is with us that he will encourage us. He, he's standing by us every right. single day. He's in us. If you've accepted Christ yes. and you're spirit-filled, you, keyword, spirit-filled, signs and wonders Seek will move through you. As a matter of fact, I want to prophesy this over you folks. Right. Like Jesus, Ooh, this is you out see. there, I have been oh, sent out to teach in my own city. If they will ask, they'll say, where did you get oh, this person, get such wisdom, hmm. these yes. miraculous powers? Yes. Matthew 13, 54, take that and run with it. And the last one I'll say, we prophesy to yes. you out there, to every single dry bone in your life, that's health, that's materials, that's well-being, and your family, and command it to live. Uh, 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 Ezekiel 37, 1 through 4. If you've never seen us before, I'd like to invite you back. Marketplace in Action, we're here at 4.30 Western Standard Time. This is all about the word to encourage you for everyday problems we have a Bible solution for. So tune in until next week. Marketplace in action. Until then, we'll wish you.